Greetings YouTubers, I'm Dwyron, and welcome to a very special SimCity 4. For a while now, I've been getting the exact same question over and over and over and over and over again, and that is how in the frack do you make a city that does not fail? Well, good question. Um, I'm going to answer it, believe it or not. Over the next couple of videos, I'm going to be releasing my tutorial on how not to suck at SimCity 4. So if you have any questions about the game at all, hopefully they will either be addressed in one of these videos, or if you drop comments down below, maybe I will make another video after the series just to address your concerns. So I hope you like them and enjoy. Alright, so the very first thing that we are going to want in our city is a power plant, and as you can see, there are many of them. I personally recommend starting off with coal, it is nice and efficient, and once you have that down, you can launch immediately into industrial zones. Why industrial zones? Because after power, you will be needing industry, and since you're probably putting your power plant on the edge of the city, you might as well put the industrial right there as well, because you are going to be starting off, regardless of what your city uh, is, you'll be starting off with uh, pollution, dirty industry. You don't want that near the commercial zones or your industrial or your residential zones. Not a good idea. So put those on the sides, and then put your commercial and residential somewhere else. You can see here that I'm putting mine a little bit close, but. You can also see that I'm kind of uh, building in this grid-like fashion. You do not have to do that. However, I recommend for your first city, if you're completely new to the game, go ahead, copy this design or one like it. The main idea here is to put as much in uh, as small a space as possible. Why is that? Well, we will get to that later. Though those of you who have played this game before, probably already know the answer. But you can see here I'm putting down a lot of commercial. Will we need all of this commercial immediately? No, we will not, but it gives us some room to grow on, and that is okay. I'm keeping things fairly uniform, so I know if it fails somewhere, it's going to fail somewhere else, and I can easily adjust my problems. Keeping things nice and simple is a good idea if you are brand new to the game. Of course, after you have your industrial, after you have your power, what are you going to need next? You will, of course, need your residential, because there are three aspects to this game. There is the industrial, the commercial, and the residential. And you want to, of course, make certain that you have all of the above. Residential can, of course, go near the commercial, unlike the residential and the commercial, which you do not want to put near the, res the industrial. These two the residential and the commercial can be close to each other. And it's fairly a good idea for that to be close to each other, because in this game, your people have to travel, and if they have to travel too far to get where they want to go, they are not going to be happy, and if they are not happy, well then Mr. Mayor, or Mrs. Mayor, or whatever, you two will not be happy, because they will not go to their jobs, because they cannot get there, and thus you will have unemployment. So here you can see I'm building my residential fairly close to my commercial for the very, very simple purpose of keeping the jobs fairly close to them. And you can see when I zoom out, we're even not that far away from our industrial. Now you might say to yourself, I do not want to create a city like this, I want to create something else. Fine, good, awesome, but if this is your first city, then this is going to be what you are going to be needing in your city. Simple, no? I thought so. You are going to be having to address your residential demand, your commercial demand, your industrial demand. And so, building at least one city in your region that is nice and stable is a good idea. Now you will also notice, those of you may have already noticed actually, that I have not given them anything else besides power, and zonings. I will give them some water, because we all need water, uh, but not much else in the way of that. And the people who message me, you know, how to make it say not fail, how to make it not fail, one thing that you're going to probably do is overzone your civics. You want your civics to have um, 
be affecting as many people as possible. And usually where people go wrong is their civics aren't affecting enough people or too many civics are affecting the same people. There's an overlap and so you're not efficient and so you're losing money and so your city fails. Here you can see very simply we're not going to fail because we're not going to give them anything to start off with. And again, some of you may be going, why are you doing that? I don't want Ghettoville 9000. I do, in fact, want a nice, successful city that has stuff. Which is nice. Good thought. Nice thought. Awesome thought. Unfortunately, if you are unfamiliar with this, you might not know what to build. You might not know what you can handle building. So give them nothing immediately. The result of which, we make money. And sometimes we have the occasional fire. But as we need things like that, we can throw them in. And slowly, ever so slowly, we will not fail as a result. Because you can see here, we can easily afford one fire station. So we throw in a fire station, and all is well. And if we proceed in a like-minded fashion, we can build up slowly but surely, without getting overwhelmed, our budget going negative, and having bad things happen to us. Now, those of you who didn't quite catch it, you'll also notice that I zoned medium density first, simply because that's the style to which I'm accustomed. You can easily zone low density. I do not recommend zoning high density immediately. If you are at all unfamiliar with the game, you are in trouble. All you have to do with uh, this particular style is keep in mind of those little things that are problems. Like right now, I had a problem with water, and I completely messed up and thought I needed a water plant, or another water pump. I didn't. I actually needed to give them more coverage, so make sure those pipes are covering everyone. This game will not build if they have no water and power, unlike some other city building games that I can name right now. Next up, Mind That RCI. I am using a mod that kind of doubles my industrial. You don't have to use it. I am just doing it for the sake of convenience. Uh, if you are not going to use it, then you'll probably need a little bit more industrial, and you'll notice we left, left plenty of room for that. The design was actually for you in mind more than for me in mind. If you're not using it, then you're probably going to use a lot of that extra space that I've left open, and that's okay. That's completely fine. That's completely fine. That's why it's there. Just showing you about how much room you want to have between your zones. And as you're building, when you stall out, as you can see that I have, I'm suddenly building uh, more onto what I have. And again, I'm keeping things a little bit, a little bit compact, just to make certain that when I do put in civics, that everyone's nice and happy and covered. Because as long as they're nice, happy, and covered, then we're doing well. Oh no. Did I click high density there? Oh god, I hope not. As you can tell, I recorded this previously, so I knew I was spe uh, speeding it up. And I hope that's not high density that I'm putting in there. I didn't see. Oh well, as I'm sure I'll catch it eventually. If I say we're still uh, building just medium density, because we do not want to get that overwhelm. And as you can see here, we're nicely dense. You can see shortly that we're making money. So once everyone has water, and you can see those other guys at the bottom didn't have it, we can start putting in civics. Now, no matter what you have in mind for your city, the benefit of starting off this way is simple. No matter how much you screw up later on, you have something to fall back on. Your city will be okay, because you can go back to this and be like, alright, this is how I can make some quick money. Or, okay, I overbuilt at a certain point, so now we need to do things. Like right now, for example, I'm making money. So I'm going to go ahead and assume I can put in things. So I'm going to put in a hospital. I'm going to put in a little bit of a funding adjustment to make certain that we're just uh, covering the area that we've got built so far. We're going to put in some schools. And if at any point we're going overboard and starting to lose money, then I can take them out. And I can say to myself, well, I was fine up until here, so where did I go wrong? But for now, it looks like we're okay. It looks like we're completely fine. 
So let's keep this city running for a bit and seeing if we are. Because who knows? Maybe I overbuilt. Doesn't look like I did. They're building in nicely. Everything's coming up. I like where my budget is. As you can see, not a lot of commercials coming up, but that's fine that we already went over that. It's too much. Just mine your uh, utilities, make certain they don't get overburdened. Pump up that uh, funding or build more if you need to. If you're using uh, no industrial mod, you might need more because you have more industrial. That's fine too. And just like that, we have a nice stable city that we can build off of. So from here, we can build the city of our dreams, hopefully.